because I didn't think I would have survived. I lost a lot of blood from my chest and my arm. My leg was blown off. My spine was paining. I didn't think I would make it. The choice to the, join the army was pretty natural. My father was in the army, my grandfather was in the army. It's like a calling, it's like becoming a priest or going celibate. It's something that you calls for you, some sacrifices. I think and I chose to do that. It's a chance for you to discover your own personality. It turned me inside out, you know. I was reborn in the sense you explored your own limits, physical, mental, moral. Moral in the sense that many times you're tempted to take a shortcut Many times you're tempted to cheat in the exams because you had not learned, but then, you know, you always knew there was something that was bigger and better. Physical because you never ran 40 kilometers in your life. You know, you never ever knew that you're capable of doing that, climbing 2,475 feet, running up, a small little town boy coming there. We developed an identity with ourselves about how we were part of a team. So the army made a man out of you. It gave you confidence in your own self. As an infantry officer to go to a city like Bangalore, where Bangalore was in the throes of that IT revolution. For me personally, it was a great therapy because I worked with young children, you know, and I saw myself there and I'm so proud of Akshay Girish, the officer who just got martyred, what a brave boy. And it was nice to be there early morning, up and running with these kids, making sure they eat well. They fed well, they dressed well, they talked well. Fundamentally, I wanted to make sure the children were not cramming for examinations and they were prepared to face life. And I'm proud that military school boys always are like that. I've seen that. You know, they're magnanimous and they're never spiteful, vengeful. And that's what good soldiering is about. Uh, every, every profession needs good people with character. A teacher needs to instill that character in those children. And that's why schools play a great role so when I knocked on the door, an old man came and I could make out from his face that there was something amiss. That guy wouldn't open the door. And then I kicked the door open. I was still not prepared for a volley of fire. You know, I had not even cocked my weapon. The whole platoon gathered there. Finally, the militants surrendered. There was this cross attachment and I was lucky because I heard two of my good friends were serving in the unit in eight guards and I chose to go there. Eight guards was deployed in the Northeast. And Northeast is a back of beyond for many of us here, but it is one of the most beautiful places that India has. It's so green, rivers and valleys, and the people are so nice. And I really wanted to serve there and counterinsurgency operations was at its peak. And I volunteered to go and serve there. For the first time, you know, from a city boy, from a small town, comfortable house, National Defense Academy. Yeah, you were prepared for all that, but you were not prepared for what you saw there. Villages burned down, you know, in that Kuki Naga clashes. Young children slashed, you know, in the name of religion or region or tribe or whatever. You know, you you're never prepared for those kind of horrors of uh, humanity. You know, you were all you believed in certain ideals and values and everything, and suddenly you see the other side of humanity. And uh, I got this information from my CEO that there's a group of insurgents planning to blow up a river. And I was tasked with the mission to locate them, hunt them down and capture them. We took a diversion and went there and surprised the villagers and reached there at around 3 o'clock. And as blessings of God, there was a small little church. And we soldiers have no religion. We believe in all gods and all religions. So I went up to the church and I said, God, I've come here. I believe there's some problem here and I want your protection, you know, not to harm this village. But I didn't think I would have survived, you know, even if I reached the hospital. I'd lost a lot of blood from my chest and my arm. My leg was blown off, my spine was paining. I didn't think I would make it. When they surrendered without arms and having surrendered, there's no way you can actually 
shoot a you know a man who surrendered. Now he surrendered to your might, and now it is your magnanimity to show what is the right way. I really didn't want to perpetuate that violence in the sense, you know, what all evil should have died with me. And that is the reason why when I saw that young children and the militant who had surrendered, I really didn't want to, you know, continue that evil that is going around there, you know, seeing and taking an eye for an eye. I, as a soldier, have a liability that I may have to give my life for my country. You know? It's a known fact. But nowhere can I transfer this liability onto a young child in whose compound the fight took place. And I'm so glad because that shows humanity has no language, no tribe, no religion, no uh, region. Today, those people were surprised that I would do something like this. And they've adopted me as a member of their own family. They called me back. Good karma does pay. They honored me and, and they love me as their own family. So if there's something evil, it had to end with me. And if there's something good, even at the cost of my life, I wanted it to come out of that. It's never an us versus them thing. They are our own people. And we're working and we are, we may be armed, but definitely the only holy book that a soldier knows is the Constitution of India. All that you need to defend, and it's one of the things about this Indian Constitution is no life is insignificant. And that's what inspires an Indian soldier. So I never, we were never trained to see them as, you know, others. We are disillusioned about something. How do we get them to mainstream? To the TFL reunion, I met the mother, went and saw the place where the rounds were fired and everything. It was nice. And I realized even in this intervening period from 94 to 2010, nothing had changed in that place. It was like time had stood still. The roads were still so bad. The village was still inaccessible. And then I felt the need to do something. You know, these conditions is what breeds insurgency and this feeling of neglect. This is as old as human history, even before our time. Go back to 5,000 years. The Bhagavad Gita is about that, isn't it? This is about human conflict. You know, our history is written like it's as recently as the last century. We had uh, the, the Europeans killing each other. You know, they all from the same religion and everything, but they they killed each other. So it's it's not something that is unique. To that place, it's there. Human conflict is part of our growing, and that's how we grow as a civilization. It's as old as our in time that even before we've seen, and time beyond what we are going to see, it's going to be there. So, I was a young, you know, boy who was uh, in awe of everything that was around me, and suddenly here you are, you come close to losing your life and taking someone else's life. Earlier, I, had, I was very ambitious, I was uh, want to know, do well in my courses and do well in, in the army and become a general. And I realized that all those really don't matter, you know. In the end of it, it's not the rank that you attain or the gradings that you get. There's no amount of money that you make is ever going to be remembered in the sense, you know, there's so many people who've gone. But what will remain forever is a good deed in the hearts of people. There what you can etch out. I'm Colonel Deepadma Kumar Pillay, commissioned in four guards, one of the finest battalions of the Indian Army. You know, I served with eight guards for that period when I was in Manipur. So it's all of 30 years that I've finished in the Army and be retiring very soon. If you ask me, what did I earn? while I was in the army. There's nothing much, you know, in terms of money, but if you look at the respect that I've earned, not only of the men I led, but the 
officers, and my colleagues, and also of my own countrymen. I don't think any other profession could have given this kind of an opportunity for me to earn this respect. And if you ask me what's my message to my countrymen, I think uh, the most important is for us to remember that we are blessed to be in this country, to be born in this country. I don't think any other country in this whole world has the kind of history and heritage and culture that we have. We have a distinct connection to our past and we have a very clear future. You must remember that all the freedom and liberty that we enjoy here has not been gifted to us. It has been earned with the blood, not only of our freedom fighters and our people in the past, but it has been upheld and defended every time over the last 70 years since our independence by people, by soldiers, by policemen, by professionals who serve this country. You can serve your country, you can be a good Indian if you are honest, hardworking, responsible and uh, devoted to your duty. Do it right without any fear or favor, without any biases, sincerely and honestly. Love for your country first and foremost.